In this video, we use AI to make watermarks completely disappear. It all started when I wanted this image. But wait a second. Zoom in, center, shutterstock. We're officially at war. Disclaimer, this project is probably not very legal or ethical, and if you think I'm a piece of shit, you're completely right. All right, moving on. Because we don't want to be that guy, let's first open up a good old Photoshop. Wait, this actually works great. Photoshop, baby! Five hours later. That took way too long. I think it's safe to say we need to AI this shit. When I say AI, I actually mean machine learning. And by machine learning, I mean deep learning. By deep learning, I just mean a neural network that is deep. Now, in order to do AI, we need three things. First, you need a shit ton of data. Secondly, you need a large neural net. And thirdly, a lot of CUDA cores. For the data, we need an input image X with a watermark, and then we need the corresponding image Y that is the potato without the watermark. So the best situation would be if we have a lot of watermarks, and then we have some images, and then we can just randomly add those watermarks onto that image. In this way, we would be in the regime of having infinite data or at the very least, very easy to get more. Now, there is only one problem. In 2017, Google came up with a more sophisticated way of adding watermarks, which has been adopted by all the big companies. For example, they randomly warp each watermark which means that they now look wiggly. They also add the watermark onto random locations on the image and with random opacities. And from my research, it also seems that our common enemy Shutterstock is top of the food chain when it comes to watermarks. And as you can see, their lines are very wiggly. Maybe adding predetermined watermarks is not the best strategy, because then we would have to replicate their watermark algorithm. After some deep thinking, I think I've found a way. So what we can do is go to Shutterstock's website, find an image that we like, like this one, and then we can do a reverse image search to try to find that image on someone's blog or website. Lucky for us, there are websites that do exactly that. And all we gotta do is search for that image and go through the alternatives and find if there's a corresponding image without the watermark. All right, now we just gotta do the work. All right, it's done. I collected 42 examples. Wow, so impressive, you lazy piece of <laughs> So some of these examples were super annoying to collect. For example, sometimes the coloring is not correct or the aspect ratio of the two are not the same. Uh, they, they've slightly zoomed in on one of the images uh, compared to the other one. Sometimes they've also done these weird changes to the image like this deer here is now an elk or something but anyways now that we got the data it's gonna be smooth sailing all the way let's start with the model here we're going to use a variant of pix2pix and pix2pix hd which are image to image translation networks which is a gan architecture with a generator and discriminator luckily this is kind of a straightforward to implement after reading through the paper in the generator, we use a bunch of downsampling blocks and then a lot of residual blocks with skip connections. Then finally, we upsample and use skip connections where we concatenate from the previous layers, similar to the UNET architecture.
The discriminator is very similar to patch GAN in pix to pix and cycle GAN, and it's nothing fancy, we just downsample with every block. Trust me, it's simple as she. For the loss, I also added a perceptual loss using VGG, similarly as pix to pix HD and SR GAN and a lot of other papers. It's pretty straightforward where we take a pre-trained VGG network and compute the loss by the mean squared error of the feature maps between the generator water free image and the target image. Loading the data, I've put them side by side for easy data loading. All we do is that we read an image and then split it by half, and there we got the input and the output image. For the data set, I actually made a mistake uh, at first, which is that I resized all the images to 256 squared, but that completely destroys the aspect ratio. And if you input the image to the left, then there's no way you want the image to the right, right? The aspect ratio is destroyed and then also there's just less pixels, right? You want to maintain the same resolution as the input image. What I did here is that I took random crops of the original image of 256 squared. And in this way, we can train it uh, to be able to uh, maintain the same resolution as the input the only negative is that we need to, when we're performing inference, we need to do it by these 256 crops of the original image. So when doing inference, we need to do it on 256 crops and that obviously increases the inference time a little bit. But I found a way to do this vectorized using PyTorch fold and unfold. So I guess it's okay. This is similar to a sliding windows approach where we take crop by crop. And uh, this is also something that I think will be incredibly useful for uh, future projects as well. for good gradients. All right, so let's take a look at the results from our masterpiece. Uh, the image to the left is the watermarked image, and then the one to the right is the generated water-free image. All of these are test case images, so it has not seen these previously during training. So let's take a look at how they look like. So just some comments on this, for example, this image is where I think it does really, really well. When there's a lot of texture change and there's a lot of color differences in the image, it can really make the watermarks uh, sort of melt into the image. But there are cases where it does not do well. And those are, for example, the potato image, which I don't think the results looks too good. And that the reason for this is I think when there's not that much color change in the image. So it's kind of hard to make the watermark sort of melt and disappear into the image. You can see signs of it right here uh, when there should be sort of a completely uh, white background and also on the potato as well. And uh, yeah, I just I, th this could also be a data issue that we don't have that much data on examples like these uh, where there's sort of one color uh, in the background. Um, but yeah, this is where it does not do that well uh, currently. Thank you so much for watching this video and I'm gonna peek at you later.